Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. So today's video is a short one on how to use the Firebase emulator to develop apps locally. If you enjoyed this kind of content, please consider subscribing and let's get right into it. Before we get started here, I'd recommend having a quick look at my Firebase tutorial, which I've done previously. Um, I'll link it in the description and somewhere on the screen. This tutorial is basically picking up where we left off there. We're using the exact same app, but obviously we're gonna try develop locally. So if you've used Firebase for a project, you may quickly come to the questions of how do you test this? How do you prototype? Or you know, how does this work with uh, the continuous integration workflow? And the answer to all those questions is to use the Firebase local emulator suite. So essentially what it is, is an instance. Um, and I think it's probably a subset, not all the, the features. So it's a subset of um, the, the cloud Firebase that you can run locally and develop and test against. So um, it's super simple to, to get set up. So that's what we're gonna do here. Um, let's get started. So I've just got the app that we made in the previous tutorial. Um, again, simple to do app list. Uh, I can add items and it won't let me add duplicates through the functions. And of course I can delete some. And then we have the sign in with Google functionality. So that brings in the uh, Google sign in. And of course I can hit the sign in button here and it's gonna bring me in uh, perfect. So let's set up the local emulator and um, yeah, update our code to use that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna open up my terminal here. And like we've done previously, I'm going to do an MPX Firebase uh, init. So we've already run this before, um, but previously we didn't tell it to set up the local emulator. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to go down to the options. I'm just going to say, yeah, set up the local emulator. We've already done the Firestore and the functions, etc. And hit enter here. Um, and it's going to ask you which products you want to enable for that local emulator. So I'm going to set uh, authentication functions and Firestore. That's all we're using in this tutorial. I'm gonna let it choose the default ports, um, enable the emulator UI, which we'll have a look at in a moment. And yeah, just default. Uh, yeah, cool. So I'm just gonna tell it to download the emulator. I think I've already got it. So there we go, pretty quick. Um, and then you can add a command. So you can do npx firebase emulators start. So as soon as you hit that, you'll see a bit of text and it's basically gonna spin up this local instance of Firebase. It's gonna expose the different products and the different ports, um, which are all here. Uh, and it's gonna tell you how to view it in the emulator. So I'm gonna to go to, over to localhost 4000, which is what it's telling me now. And let's just expand this. And this is basically your local instance of the Firebase emulator. So um, you can see here that I have the authentication, Firestore and function emulators all on. Um, and I can of course, uh, let's see, Firestore, I can go into the Firestore emulator and we've got this kind of minimal view of um, the actual Firestore. We can go into the authentication, add users. We can go into the, the functions one and we can see that, yeah, one of our functions are already there. So I can, you know, um, read the logs, etc. So that's all fine. Let's actually hook up our app to use the emulator now. So to do this is actually really simple. Um, so I'm just going to lower this down there and I'm gonna go over to our firebase.js file. So this is where we configure Firebase. This is where we initialize our app. And all we really need to do is tell any of our products, so auth, Firestore function, to use the local emulator instead of um, going up to, to the real one. So the way we do that is we can essentially um, take all these and they all have a function called use emulator, which you can uh, call on it. So the auth one is actually slightly different. I'm not sure why. But this one takes in the um, basically the, the URL. So uh, HTTP uh, localhost. I think the port for the auth was um, 9099. So let's pop that in. And then for the other two, we can put in the host and the different ports. So host for both of these is going to be just localhost. And then the ports are going to be for Firestore, it's going to be 8080. And for function is going to be 5001 um, and that's it so of course this is going to do it every time so you might want to wrap this in an if statement so i might say um if window dot location let's just pop location the host name uh includes the uh, local host so just here this is just a quick check if it's local host set up this configuration otherwise just use the, the standard one cool um, and I think that's everything. So I'm just going to hit start here, uh, npm start, and we'll see if that works. And what I'm going to do is while that's getting started, let's open this up a bit. Cool. So now that that's running, you can see that uh, Firebase is obviously putting this big uh, banner at the bottom just to remind you that you're uh, in emulator mode. Now, 
in terms of signing in with Google, it doesn't actually reach out to the, the real Google. They've got this kind of kind of mock uh, authenticator here. So it's telling me that we're going to sign in with Google, but you know, you can kind of configure the accounts and everything within the emulator. So I'm going to click add new account here. I'm just going to auto generate some random ones. I'll get chicken. Nice. And sign in with Google. And you can see that I've signed in um, and let's just add test emulator. And I'm going to add this one. So I think the first time it takes some time. So let's try pop it in again. So we'll just make sure the function's doing its job. Cool. And another one. Uh, add this, delete one. Cool. So that's kind of all the functionality there. Now let's head over back to our emulator suite. And let's just check everything went through fine. So the authenticator here, um, we can go in here and let's refresh. I can see um, my user, Algay Chicken, is there. And I can go in and edit the user, disable, etc. Um, if we go over to Firestore, we can see the collections. And again, we can go ahead and edit and create, etc. And finally, if we go over to the um, functions, I think this is just under the logs. Let's see, view logs. We can see every time our function got called. So anytime that we did an action, the function was being called here. Yeah, that's all working fine. So let's just close this up. One final thing that we are going to double check is uh, the Firestore rules. And the Firestore rules here are just updated automatically. So if I jump into the Firestore rules and I remove one of those rules, I'll open up the uh, logs for the um, emulator. We can see here that the rules are basically being updated um, in place. So now if I jump back over here and refresh, it's not gonna pick up anything because you know the rules are running and it's by default here, it's not allowing anyone to, to read or write. So if I try to, to write anything, it's not gonna let me. Um, so if I undo that rules block again, so basically it's checking the authentication, come back over here and refresh and we're back and it's all working fine. So that's really it in a nutshell. You can see that I can now kind of develop locally quite quickly here before deploying anything um, up to Firebase. And you know this is all you know being done in the in the command line. We don't need the actual visual emulator. It all kind of works um, directly using the CLI. So this is all uh, things that can kind of jump into your uh, continuous integration workflow. And um, yeah, I think I'll wrap it up there. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day, and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>